Hello again here at NAMM 2017. Guitar Girl Magazine has the pleasure of talking to Diana Rain, a fantastic blues artist. Uh, one woman band, and we'll talk a little bit about that. I had the pleasure of seeing her perform today, and um, welcome. Thank you so much. It was so nice to hear you today. I was listening to your music, and I was struck by, I saw on your website, where, or no, I think it was your Yahoo uh, account, that you said that Stevie Ray Vaughan was probably one of your influences. Is that correct? Well, I think, uh, yeah. Yes. Wherever you look on my website or YouTube or anywhere, you'll probably see his name. I've got his initial tattooed on my left wrist, so I can see it. You are serious. So I can see it when I'm playing. <laughs> Get me out of my head, like back in the game. Well, then tell me how you got to be such a fan of Stevie Ray Vaughan, since you are coming from two completely different eras. Oh um, man, I saw one of his DVDs, and I was playing acoustic and teaching myself how to play acoustic at the time. And I saw his live in Austin DVD. And have you seen him with uh, Albert King? Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? Very. And that, I, I love how he really like shows his notes very carefully when he was playing with Albert King. Like, you can see the respect losing out. Absolutely. And, and it was both ways, but yeah, Stevie totally sits in awe of Albert King. He's like King. a little puppy in that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> He's great. I have to say, I have that album, the CD, in my car. And I never get tired of listening to it. I can listen to it twice in a row, right? So it's good. So listening to you play, I hear that kind of blues coming out. I hear the more of the the um, what do they call that? The uh, Texas, Texas Shuffle, Texas Shuffle, right? And that one of the songs that you played today kind of had a little bit of that. Um, uh, what's the, what's the it's like a bold She's my pride and joy. Oh yeah, pride yeah, yeah. You've got a little shuffle going on in one of those songs. Yeah, yeah, wild one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah. first one I played. Uh, all these songs are on my album Long Road, just in case I'm you know, spewing a lot of titles out. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> so, just trying to get, understand your time, your style, and how you learn to play, and you had a fairly long journey there, right? Learning to play. Yeah, I, I'm from Chicago, so the first time I heard the blues was when I had to sing it. Uh, I didn't have any notes. Basically, my uncle was playing at a blues bar in Chicago called the Back Room Blues, and he invited my family to go watch him play. And they invited me up to sing a blues song. I didn't know it was a blues song. It was just like an improv, like a full bar blues, and you improv the words. <laughs> so, being an eight-year-old child, I had no filter, and I was like, "Yeah, I get to be on stage." Yeah. And let me, let me, yeah, let me yeah. dance and do my thing, and uh, I had a lot of fun and. Got hooked on the blues. Now guitar came later. My dad was like, "You need to learn how to play the piano." So I did, and I have a foundation. I don't play well, but I have a foundation, and it's great for music. And <laughs> but I always heard guitar players, and I get goosebumps, and I knew that there was something there. And I picked up a guitar the first time when I was 16, and uh, then I went to college, so I let it go. And then I came back and moved to Chicago after college, and that's when I saw SRV play, and I picked up the electric guitar. And then the and rest was, is history. Yeah, the rest is history. I was recording, I mean, yeah, I recorded my first album just doing rhythm guitar. So it wasn't until, pretty, like, maybe three years ago that I really was heavily playing and learning how to play lead guitar. And was your breakthrough learning the scales, as you talked about? <laughs> Yeah, learning scales, but just listening. I think listening and getting a feel for, because uh, it's not like, for me it's not about scales, it's about another voice. I really want it to sound like authentically blues, but like uh, there's a melody to it as well that I'm hearing. And everyone has, every guitar player has things that they repeat in their playing because it's like walking. Like everyone walks differently, everyone talks differently at a different pace. It's the same with guitar playing. And that's why I really love it, because when I hear SRB or other great guitar players that I love, like Buddy Guy, uh, Eric Clapton, they're all different, but what you're hearing on that guitar is what they're hearing in their head maybe like a nanosecond before it appears. So I, I just love that it's like an inside scoop on, like, on the person's soul. It's a person's soul singing. So you add a little bit of uh, extra into your uh, playing. You're not only playing rhythm and playing lead and singing, but you're keeping the beat with a bass and a tambourine. 
that yeah. you operate with your foot. Tell us about that setup and how that came about. So I saw an artist in Austin, not on YouTube, his name is Shaky Graves, and he was playing with a suitcase drum. And at the time, I was like, how can I, I want to play lead guitar, and I want to get out there as a one-woman band. How am I going to do this? Because I need to play lead, you need to have something behind you. So I brought in a looper, and I recorded all of my like rhythm guitar playing that I turn on and off during my performance. And then the suitcase drum. I love it so much. It's so much fun. <laughs> I had um, these guys, Richmond Brothers, build it for me. And they mailed it out and I got it. <laughs> the first time I stepped foot on it, because it's a kick drum and a tambour. And I was like, oh my god, what did I just pay money for? What did I get myself into? This is going to be a disaster. I can't keep time. And maybe after like a week and a half of practicing, it just Oh, it sounded great, so it looks like it's working for you. It's working and it's fun, and like as I'm experimenting at home and figuring out what beats are going to work good where, and sometimes I just go on the fly, but I usually like to um, do stuff beforehand, like to practice and make sure it's going to sit for me. Well, I loved all the songs, but one of them I was struck by was the instrumental piece. Tell us how about that song uh, and, and how it came about. So I wrote, I've only written two instrumentals. Peace is one of them, and they were written at the same time. The other one is called Zoe, and it's, they were both written when my dog passed away in May of 2015. Um, yeah, so I just, I was filled with emotion. I was recording my album, and everything was like, I put everything to a stop. I was like, oh, go on, and all I could do, I couldn't even sing, all I could do is just like, I always wanted to write instrumental, so every time I play him, I think of her, and I, I love her. Well, that's, I can appreciate that. We lost a dog recently as well, so that's a great escape, is, is doing something like that. So that is on your the CD that you currently have out, right? Yeah, it's okay. on the block. So how many songs are on that? There are 12 songs. It's a full, full album. Okay. So where can we find that? So I have one here so I can show you what it looks like. You can find that on iTunes as well, but you can also get an autographed copy on my website, dianarain.com. And what's coming up next? Any new projects that you're involved with right now? So the next one I'm doing is for Temecula Valley Music Awards. Okay. Um, there was an awards show a month or so back, and I won Best Blues Artist. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So a bunch of winners from that show are going to be showcasing that night at uh, Belvino Winery in Temecula, California. And then otherwise, I'm working on a one-woman tour. I have a four-year-old son, and I have my husband, and I wanted to find a way for us to kind of create our own little gypsy world. <laughs> get on the road Yeah, family. get on the road right, with my family. Right. And go do fun things for my son in different cities, sure. like things that he likes to do, and do a show, sorry, excuse me, do a show, and for my husband to be able to work from the road, so, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to have our family as a priority, as the umbrella, and then build a career around that, and just playing music is amazing, and whatever capacity I can do it. Okay, great. So your fans can keep an eye out on that on your website for whenever you have tour dates, right? Yeah. So they can find a way to come catch a live show. And I can tell everybody out there that you won't be disappointed. It's a great show. She puts out a lot of sound for one small body there on the stage. Puts a lot of good sound out, a lot of good, a lot of good, like I said, shuffle, a lot of good leads. And you know, if anybody that's listening knows what it's like to play guitar and try to perform, you know, playing guitar and lead and singing is probably the hardest package that you can pursue. And and you've found perfection there, it sounds like to me. Thank you. So very good. It's a work in progress always. Yeah. And you're and you're just very quick, your inspiration for most songs. I mean what what do they come from? Like Typical rock songs, right, are kind of like love songs, right? There's always a love song, or maybe a broken heart song. I understand the emotion around the dog, but what about some of the others where you have some lyrics and you know, some pretty good leads going on? So, what kinds of things move you to write? Uh, for this one, I think, like, with songs like Real Thing and Down, 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 
uh, and come back home, it was about overcoming struggle, overcoming, like, um, I was dealing with some health issues at the time. So, it's, it's about relationships, too, but just being a, can I say man? Just say, say. <laughs> can I say that? Sure. Being a badass <laughs> and um, embracing my badassness. <laughs> That's good. Well, that's yeah. what rock and blues are really kind of yeah. all about, right? Yeah. And the next one I've noticed is a lot about the afterlife. The next album I've got one on. Death, really? The afterlife. Yeah. Why are you consumed with that? It, I wrote all those songs after my dog passed, and, and it wasn't just about her. I was like reconnecting with like Steve, this uh, spirit of Stevie Ray, which. Your guy in the sky, like you said, your favorite yeah. guy in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. I feel I have had instances where you know not to get weird or anything but I just feel him around me or I feel like he's guiding me like I had a vocal surgery and I had a few signs from him like uh, I was meditating and uh, someone came down the street playing blaring Little Wing his version of Little Wing and it's like when I'm meditating about these things I don't I don't take anything as a coincidence I feel like uh, I take any little thing it is, it's, it's, it's meant to be, and it's a sign from somewhere, and he's come to me a lot. So. Has he, do you think he's been a driving force behind your song, right? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I mean, there was, there's one song on the next album called Blue Slinger that's about him. I wanted it to be about him, I had the title, I had the um, chords and everything, like, all shelled out, but for the life of me, I could not come up with lyrics. How, you're so amazing. Like, what do, how, how am I going to break this down to allow people to really see how I feel about you? And so I'm sitting there for three days, nothing. And all of a sudden, I look at his picture up on my wall, and I say, Stevie, you got to help me out here. And I hit record, start playing. The first verse comes out, and the chorus comes out. So whether, I don't know what to call it, but it's some kind of guidance. So, whatever helps. Whatever helps in your writing. Right. Well, that's yeah, whatever good. works. Well, that seems to be working well for you. Well, we look forward to that new album when it comes out. Look forward to catching up with you on your website to see when your tour is going to get underway. And hopefully you'll come uh, to the South in that way. We'll be able to come by and catch a show. <laughs> so, any, is there one, any last thing that you'd like for your newfound fans here in the Dark World Magazine to know about you? Uh, um, to know about me... Uh, I feel if I could give any advice to you girls out there that are playing any sort of instrument is that A, it's not about talent, B, it's about hard, hard work. So get there every single day with your instrument and play as much as you can. And there are some days, I have a four-year-old, I know it's not easy, but even if you're not playing, think about it. Watch YouTube, watch your inspirations, uh, just constantly, constantly work at it because it's uh, it's your love, it's your passion, then you will excel. I have a son who's a musician and he has a theory that anything you put 10,000 hours of practice in, you become expert in. Yeah, and I can't remember what book that's from. Is it a book? Outliers, maybe? I think it's Outliers. He made me think it came from him, so I don't know. I have a long way to go until I get to 10,000 hours. A lot of, there's a lot to that. But I also know that, isn't Tom Branson with Virgin Records? Is that Tom Branson? Virgin, the whole company? I think it is. Yep. Brant, Branson is his last name. But he also says, don't wait. Go out there and do it. Because honestly, you can sit in your room and practice for as long as you want, but it's not the same as actually getting up in front of people and performing. And that's that's just how you cut your teeth. So get out there and do it no matter what level you're at. Go to open jams. Just do it. That's good advice. Well, it was very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. And, uh, Thank you for coming out to the booth today. Continued success. Thank you. Continue to soar. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>